NIS is releasing a package containing two titles, Makai Kingdom Reclaimed and Rebound and ZHP Unloosing Ranger vs Dark Death Evil Man. These two games have been around for a long time. Makai Kingdom was initially released for PlayStation 2 in 2005 and ZHP for PlayStation Portable in 2010. This may mean that people who only play on Nintendo consoles unfortunately didn't get the chance to play these games. But now it's 2022 and here comes two games that will be available for the Nintendo Switch and also get a chance to buy a physical edition. Unfortunately, the limited edition variant seems to be almost sold out. If you want to buy the game in the eShop, it currently costs 40 bucks. I received a review copy of this game and in this video I discuss basic aspects of the game. Please subscribe to my channel, I upload new videos every week. And now, NIS Classics Volume 2. First, I think we will check out Makai Kingdom Reclaimed and Rebound. The game has a somewhat odd narrative. An overlord named Seda must destroy a book that unfortunately lead to the destruction of his own world. In order to rectify the situation, he binds his own soul to the book and now becomes a prisoner. What should Seda do to be able to free himself from the book and become the great overlord he once was? This story is quite lighthearted, humorous and quite twisted. You usually get to see cutscenes between different missions. These mostly consist of dialogues between the game's different characters. Since this is a very comprehensive game, you can expect lots of events. Makai Kingdom is a turn-based strategy game. At the beginning and throughout the game, new elements are introduced, which means that the game contains many tutorials. Everything from how combat works, to how vehicles can be used and what benefit you have from all buildings. In the beginning, there is an introduction that reveals how characters are moved across an isometric playing field. Instead of a grid system, you move freely within certain limits. It gives one a certain freedom in how one's troops should be positioned. Sometimes there can be many combatants at the same same time, which makes it look very messy, but since you usually move in battle in an easy way, it's not so complicated to understand what is going on. However, one thing that irritates me was how the characters move through narrow passages, especially if it's in terrain. It feels a bit clumsy to move the troops if the course is hilly. Usually several characters are moved and it can be difficult to find good places for everyone. It can be a real mess and it becomes especially clear on courses with height differences. I mostly find the fights entertaining. You place your squad on the playing field and then have to think through your moves. Which men should be used and which attacks are preferable. It depends on the situation and how the game board is designed and finding the enemy's weaknesses. The game boards sometimes contain hidden areas that can be revealed when you have eliminated some enemies or you discover new areas when you throw an object in the direction of the white grid. Some battles can take a long time because there are many enemies as well as a large area. But I think it's getting a little addictive. It's fun to go into battle, eliminate your opponents, level up and find good items. After a course is completed, I want to move on to the next. For the most part, it's really fun. Sometimes I realized that the level of difficulty was a bit unbalanced. Some fights were extremely easy, while others surprised me. They were simply too difficult. My level was simply too low to withstand the opponent's attacks. Or I had to create new characters that basically perform very well. And there is a plethora of different classes in this game. It can be tricky to know in in advance which class is superior and best for each situation, but it's also one of the game's challenges to navigate a jungle of different classes and find what suits one with the best. Sure, it's not a new game and a lot of information and guides are available online, but for those who want to get their own experience without any help, we'll probably need to put some effort into testing different classes and find out which ones feel best. But it's also part of the game charm, all the possibilities and options. The game contains lots of different systems that can be important to know about. For example, in Equip Arrange there is an overview of each character's basic stats, but also the ability to dress the men with weapons, armor and other important items. The shop sells lots of things that can be advantageous. The developers have really created a wide range of things to buy. However, the items cost money, so there is the opportunity to sell things found in dungeons. In this way, the troops are constantly upgraded. This is a very big game, with many things to consider, which troops you want to play with, how they are perceived in battle, which weapons and armor fit well and which attacks are strong. I have to say that it's generally really entertaining because it's a brilliant combination of different strategies, systems, battles and the advantage of all buildings and vehicles. Perhaps it takes a long time to master all aspects of this game, but that's also what's fun. There is so much to do and consider. 
The other game included in this release is ZHP Unlosing Ranger vs Dark Death Evil Man. And I can say right from the start, if you love character development, then this might be worth checking out to go from being a real loser to getting an indestructible body. The goal is to defeat Dark Death Evil Man, who threatens to kill a super baby. Can you stop this from happening? Just like in the first game, the narrative is quite humorous and easy, almost a little ridiculous at times. After a completed course, you get the opportunity to fight against Dark Death Evil Man, but of course you are very weak at the beginning. At the same time you see how you gradually become stronger and make more resistance. The character being played runs around in randomly procedurally generated dungeons and the fights are turn based. The enemies have various attacks that can be important to know, especially their super attacks. The possibility exists to block and it's useful for survival. Health pool and energy can be seen on the screen. You generate health while walking, but the energy gradually disappears. It's important to keep track of the energy and constantly try to top up that meter. If your energy reaches zero, you start to suffer constant damage. In dungeons there are objects that can boost your energy and they can be extremely necessary in the long run, especially since the courses can be very long. There is also a level up system, but it's slightly different. In each dungeon you level up relatively quickly, but after a course is completed or if you die, your level is reset. However, the number of levels reached is converted to a total level, which means that the base stats increase. You become permanently stronger, but I discovered that you have to do lots of dungeons and get many levels to increase your stats. Yeah, this is also a big and long game. After a while a new type of dungeon opens up, called Master Cave. Here you can obtain new levels and get new stats at a faster pace. This is a really fun aspect of the game and I feel how one's character gradually gets stronger. The longer you play, the more buildings open up, for example your own home or a blacksmith where you repair your gear. There is also a dark clinic where you implant chips and place booster devices to become stronger. Here you use a unique system. All weapons found in dungeons can be turned into stats by placing weapons in a grid. On the grid you can then place boosters that for example enlarge your inventory or provide other benefits. Again, this is another dimension of character development I find entertaining. Ok, so NIS Classic Volume 2 is certainly a comprehensive edition. It contains two games that offer loads of content. Character development, lots of different systems, turn-based battles and other things that make the games multidimensional. The light-hearted tone also makes the games feel humorous and entertaining. These are not games you can manage in one sitting. Several days are probably needed. And sure, maybe some patience is needed to understand all aspects, but that's also the charm of those games. I thought this was a good package and quite an addictive experience. Feel free to subscribe to my channel, I upload new reviews and other content every week. Have a good day, see you!